Hey everybody, Dave Hagen here. Today we're going to update three issues from some previous shows. That's today on the Financial Wellness Podcast. Welcome to the Financial Wellness Podcast, Dave's weekly message to keep you on your path to the financial success. Here is your host, financial problem solver and talk show host, Dave Hagen. Hello, everybody. This is Dave Hagen coming to you from beautiful downtown Van Nuys. For those of you in other parts of the country, that's uh, just outside of LA and yeah, kind of near Hollywood. Hey, look, today, Mr. Brian Reed's with us. Good morning, Brian. Good to be here, as always. So, Brian, today I want to talk about three issues from past shows, just to update people, keep everybody informed, and make the point once again that we're talking about relevant, cutting-edge uh, kind of stuff. So, update number one, student loans. Boy, how many times have we talked about this? You know, if you look back to episode 124 in July of 2018, we talked about the fact that there was $1.4 trillion in student loan debt. In fact, more student loan debt than the credit card debt these days. And that people owed more than, you know, a million dollars. We talked about a whole handful of people that owed more than a million dollars, including um, an orthodontist, as I recall. In episode number 137, which was just last November, we talked about the possibility of people having to pay income tax if they get their student loans forgiven. So here's the update. Wow. The amount of student loan debt is now $1.56 trillion. It's gone up a bunch just in the last six months or so. 44 million Americans have student loans now. 11.5% of the student loans out there are delinquent. 65% of all graduates have student loan debt, and 40% of that debt is for graduate degrees. Now, this is all stuff that's coming from the Federal Reserve and the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. This is basically government statistics. The update, the interesting thing, it seems to me, in addition to the increase in debt, is the fact that the presidential candidates are starting to talk about this issue. This means It's a problem. This means people are interested. This means they're trying to get your vote. So what are all these candidates saying? Hmm. How about Elizabeth Warren? She's talking about forgiving student loan debt up to $50,000 per person. Now, Forbes magazine says that this will forgive all the debt for about 75% of all the borrowers out there. Well, sounds pretty good. I guess the argument is that student loan debt is holding back the economy by preventing the younger part of our population from buying cars, houses, etc. They've even gone so far as to say that forgiving this much debt would actually be a stimulus for the U.S. economy because these people wouldn't be paying debt. They would be going out and buying houses and cars and, and what have you. Interesting. Interesting thought, interesting argument. Bernie Sanders, the original Mr. Free Publication, free Public Education for All. He hasn't talked about forgiving debt so much, much yet, but he's talked about putting a cap on the interest rates on some of these loans. Joe Biden. I mean, he doesn't really have a firm position yet because he's only been in the game a short period of time. But, you know, he was a big proponent of the bankruptcy law changes that happened about 10, 12 years ago that made student loan debt non-dischargeable or part of that era. Um, But he says his position has evolved. So it's going to be really interesting to see what he's going to come out with in the next days and weeks and, and months ahead. And of course, President Trump, he put together a budget proposal last month and it dealt with in part 
student loan issues. He wants to eliminate forgiveness plans for public service. As a lot of our listeners know, if you have student loan debt and you work for a company that, uh, or work for an entity that provides a public service or is a um, uh, approved charity that you can get some forgiveness on that student loan debt after a period of time. But he wants to eliminate that for public service. He wants to streamline income-driven plans. As many of you know, there's some plans out there that the government offers that you pay a certain portion of your income for a certain portion of years. And if you do that, the balance will be uh, forgiven. And he wants to change it a little bit so that you don't have to pay more than 12.5% of your income for 15 years on undergrad loans and 30 years for graduate loans. So they're talking about cutting that back, or that's part of their budget proposal. And then he would end uh, subsidizing student loans uh, or the payment, the government makes the payment on these student loans while you're in school. So I guess the government is in part subsidizing some of these loans, and they, they want to stop that. Well, what's the stated reason why they would want to do this, right? Well, I mean, point one is they say that it would save the government money, which is true. And two, um, they say that it would streamline the student loan arena. So it's interesting. Um, Some candidates are talking about um, modifying the system. Um, Some have yet to weigh in and some are saying, wow, let's let's just forgive a, a, a whole lot of debt. So this is going to evolve over the next year, all the way up until the next uh, election. Stay tuned. Um, Hopefully, when they have these uh, forums with people asking questions, they're going to ask these politicians these questions, and it'll kind of flush them out in terms of what their thoughts are in dealing with this huge, huge problem. What solution is best? I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't want to get too political here because... As soon as you do, you're going to make a a chunk of your uh, uh, listeners uh, unhappy. But the point here is that it's an important issue. A lot of our listeners have this kind of debt, and it's being discussed on the highest political stage. This is important, relevant stuff. What I do know, though, is that some of the things that they're talking about, or I should say not talking about, are some pretty key issues. Issues like getting a degree is become or has become way too costly. It's gotten a little bit out of hand. In fact, it's gotten ridiculous. Uh, another issue, I think maybe it's becoming less about the education and and more about a branding issue. I mean, look at the look at what just happened with respect to um, USC and and bribes and people getting into schools of you know that have a big brand name. Is it about the education or is it about the brand on the resume? Is it about being cool? Celebrities were paying. Hundreds of thousands, in some cases, half a million dollars to get their kids into a specific cool school. We need to think about that. Is this about education or branding? And as you're picking out an institution, maybe for a graduate degree, maybe that's something to think about, too. Um, If they forgive debt, as uh, candidate uh, Elizabeth Warren proposes, will it be taxable? We talked about this in an earlier podcast. You know, if you, if you owe $10 and you don't have to pay it, uh, generally that's considered a benefit and is taxable at the federal level. Now, there's exceptions to that, and accountants can walk you through that, and we don't want to get into any specific tax advice here. But, wow, if people have loans are forgiven, do the, do the politicians even realize that under the current tax code that could be taxable? Another issue that I, I think is not being really addressed is how necessary is a degree? I mean, everybody seems to acknowledge that it's critical. Everyone seems to acknowledge or accept the fact that it increases somebody's long-term earning potential. But is that still the case? Ask, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, ask uh, Bill Gates, ask, um, you know, some of these entrepreneurs that we see in the, in the media. Maybe it's not the critical thing that it was, it was maybe 10, 20, 30 years ago. I'm not saying it's a waste of money. Of course not. I'm saying is we need to rethink this a little bit. And then I guess most importantly is if, the, if these student loans are forgiven, um, who pays? 
You know, the Warren campaign says that it'll cost $680 billion to forgive those loans. Well, who pays? I mean, that's money that's owed to a governmental entity. Who pays? Guess what? You and I. You and I pay. Now, if it's $680 billion to forgive that debt and it's money that's not coming in, or maybe it's money that wouldn't have completely all come in because they've got to chase a lot of these people that owe this money. But if it's not coming in, that's a lot of money to miss out on. In fact, remember we, we said the, op, uh, the government operates on a little over a, a trillion dollars, trillion and a quarter dollars a year if you take out all the entitlement money. Um, and if we're not getting 680 billion, that's about half coming in. That means that we're missing out on a half of a year's operating budget. Now that's that's pretty tough. That's pretty tough. And if our national debt all combined is $16 trillion, we're just going to add to that pile. Now, uh, who's, who's going to pay that? And we're paying interest on that. That's money that's not come in. It's debt. What are we going to do? Well, that's something that's got to be addressed in the long term. So stay tuned. This is going to be an interesting issue. It's going to be talked about a lot uh, in the next uh, 18 months as we lead up to the election. Hopefully it will be an interesting, um, you know, grown-up type of discussion because I think that as a country, we need to talk about this. We need to kind of work through this. And the listeners, many of whom have debt, are vitally interested in terms of what's going to happen. Um, update number two, Social Security. Uh, you know, if you think back to episode 148, it was like at the end of our first season, we talked about Social Security not being able to pay full benefits starting in 2034. So at some point down the line, Social Security is projected numerically not to be able to pay full benefits. Not no benefits, but a reduced amount of benefits. And then we talked about the fact that 2018, last year, was supposed to be the first year that they were going to have to dip into the reserves to, to pay full benefits. Well, just recently, a report of the Social Security trustees came out, just last week, and it said that because disability, Social Security disability claims are down a bit, um, the period of time or the year when they're not going to be able to pay full benefits is pushed back to 2035. And we're not going to go into reserves starting last year, but now starting this year. Now, is this a big deal? No, I mean, it's not a huge big deal, but it is a step in the, in the right direction. Things are fluid. Things change. Um, we still have to look at this issue. But uh, we did have a nice little bump in the right direction just this past year. Secondly, I think it's something that we can, we can celebrate. I mean, so many times we talk about all the negative stuff. And I think that this is something positive that we can celebrate. Hey, you know, those difficult dates are just a little bit further down the road. We're moving in the right direction. Um, it's a small change. And we still need to look at the whole program. But, you know, it's something to celebrate. It's something to think about. And in this election year, I think it's something that, again, we should be asking the candidates and see what their thoughts are, what they propose, what the um, hopefully big thinkers uh, have in mind for, for these kinds of uh, issues. Uh, update number three, cutting the cord. I just can't let this one go. I mean, we discussed cutting the cord in episode 132 seven months ago. Uh, Brian, you did a, a whole thing on, on cutting the cord and your personal journey. Great episode. We discussed it maybe six months later in episode 139. Um, we even discussed it a few weeks ago. You remember a couple weeks ago, I said, wow, DirecTV Now, which is a streaming service, uh, went up from 40 bucks to 50 bucks. In fact, when I first jumped online um, to get that service, it was 35 bucks, then it went to 40, now it's 50. Not as much a savings over cable as it was initially. Um, still a little bit of a savings because you got all the taxes and all the rental fees and all the other stuff, but not nearly the, hey, this is a big deal kind of event that it was. So I told you that I was going to check out YouTube TV, which was 40 bucks, uh, very similar in design to DirecTV now, maybe a little better interface, but you got to learn how to use it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I told you I would keep you updated. And that is 
what I'm doing. I'm keeping you updated. So here we are just a few weeks later. And wouldn't you know, YouTube TV is up their price to 50 bucks. So now there's no price difference. Now they're just going to compete with their user interface with the channels that they have. In fact, um, I think that DirecTV took a couple channels away just last week. So things are changing weekly on this issue, and you need to stay tuned. We'll keep you up to date in a general kind of way. You know, there's even a website and a podcast out there called Cutting the Cord. Um, you can find out what's going on a, on a week-to-week basis. We don't want to spend a, an abundance of time on it, but I find it fascinating the way that we consume our our national TV channels and even our national specialty channels, uh, you know, is changing. It's changing rapidly, almost week to week. So stay tuned. Oh, what do you think about all this? What can you tell us to share with all of the listeners about this? You know, I've, I've got a couple thoughts here. Um, first of all, Mr. Frugal's telling me that Pluto TV is the thing now. Uh, you don't know who Mr. Frugal is. Well, stay tuned because he's going to be on in a couple of episodes. He's like our ultimate cost cutter, lower your expenses kind of guy. And we are going to interview Mr. Frugal here. But uh, he says, Pluto TV, what's up with that? Let me know. Send me an email or send me an, um, you know, an audio comment at the financialwellnesspodcast.com. Um, recently one night I was sitting home with the TV and I'm looking at, uh, the different apps that I've got and I've, I'm looking at, uh, direct TV now and I'm looking at Netflix and I'm looking at prime and I'm looking at some other choices that I, I don't subscribe to. And I've already looked through the movies and stuff and the stuff that I've wanted that I'm interested in. I've seen TV, we're kind of in a period of the year where there's not a lot of sports. So I'm going, well, that's kind of, that's kind of over. And, and I don't get the Dodgers because I'm, I'm just not going to pay for that whole uh, deal. And I'm going, wow, there's nothing here that interests me. What am I going to do? I might have to go online. I might have to go to YouTube and look at videos that people have uploaded. I might even have to spend more time reading a good book. I don't know. How are you dealing with it? Let me know. Go to the website, thefinancialwellnesspodcast.com and send us an email or, or lay out a, um, you know, an audio question or an audio comment. We'll put it on the air and share it with the other listeners. Should be interesting how this particular issue is evolving. This is Dave Hagan, and you're listening to the Financial Wellness Podcast. You've been listening to the Financial Wellness Podcast, Dave's weekly message to keep you on your path to financial success. If you have a question that you would like Dave to answer on the podcast, go to thefinancialwellnesspodcast.com. You can leave an audio message with one click of a button or type your message into the question box. Either way, it's sent right to Dave's phone. As an additional bonus, each month, Dave will randomly draw from the submitted questions and pick the winner of a free one-hour personal conversation with Dave to help you achieve your financial goals. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you receive the new episode notifications. Let's listen in now as Dave answers some emails. So Brian, Brian, check this out. Um, Instead of having you read an email, I've got something or a question that someone asked me this week. And I want to talk about that. What? Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm really pretty serious. So, so check this out. Check this out. Um, a guy was telling me that his car got hit. It was in a parking lot and someone hit his car. And, and the driver was cool enough to, uh, you know, to leave a note. And uh, their insurance company said, okay, we'll pay you for the damage. And the insurance company paid him uh, five grand. And so his comment to me was, well, should I fix the car or should I bank the money? And I think a lot of people think about this when they get that, when they get that check. So I think a couple things to um, uh, think about. Um, First of all, you know, it seems to me you need to be thankful that there was no injury. 
uh, no blood and guts and, and bone and tissue and, and none of that. Just glass and metal. Just glass and metal. It can be fixed for the most part. So we're, we're grateful there wasn't uh, any injury. This, ha- this particular accident happened in a parking lot. Um, secondly, you know, when you're considering whether to fix the car or bank it, you have to think about the, the safety issues. Uh, are any of the repairs that need to be made relative or relate to the safety of the vehicle? You know, I mean, if the, if the wheel is wobbly, I mean, obviously you've got to make the changes. If it's just some pushed in, um, you know, body work, well... I mean, maybe you can, you know, maybe you can still continue, consider whether you want to do this. Um, third, I think it makes a big difference whether you own or lease the car. I mean, if you lease the car, you got to make the repairs because when you turn it back in, they're going to charge you for the damage anyway. So you might as well get it done and drive around the car fixed up for the rest of the lease. But if you own it, or if you're you're buying it over time and you're going to ha- own it at the end, I guess you still have the ability to, you know, make this decision whether you want to fix it or or bank it. I think another thing is consider the attitude towards your car. Now, you know, I mean, in L.A., the car's the thing. We're all on the freeway. We're all pulling up to you know Hollywood premieres in our cars. Not, but we do pose a lot in L.A. and. Our car is this car is part of that. So, um, if that's part of your reason for driving the car, well, maybe maybe you make the you know the repairs. Um, if you don't care what you drive, well, I mean, now again, you're back to thinking where you bank it. I love that. Um, what was that movie? Beverly Hills Cop with Eddie Murphy, and he was from Detroit, and he drove this car out, this beater car, and I seem to remember that it was kind of a powder blue or a blue. And he pull, pulls up to a Beverly Hills hotel and he gives the, the valet the car and he says, now take care of this car. It got this beat up when I was here last time. And that just cracked me up because the, the valet is looking at him with kind of this quizzical look on his face. But, you know, in some parts of the country, your car isn't that big of a deal. In fact, from what I understand, and I'm not particularly well traveled, but what I understand is some parts of the country, a lot of people don't have cars. Like in New York, everyone's taking public transportation. It's just too expensive to to park and, and drive a car. So if it's not part of your, your persona, if it's not part of your need to get around, well, you know, maybe you consider banking it. Um, certainly don't spend the money on something else like, you know, a new stereo or whatever. But if you put it in the bank, you're getting, you know, maybe, well, couple of percent maybe in the bank and an investment account, maybe six, seven percent if you leave it there for a long period of time. Um, So that might be a nice addition to either your emergency fund or your long term savings or I suppose you could even put it into a, you know, an an IRA account or, or what have you. But I don't know. On balance, if it were me, I think that I would get the car fixed unless you're just comfortable driving around a total, total beater car. You know, I've even seen where people go and buy a can of spray paint and they spray paint over it. Like if they got a black car, they go get some shiny black paint and they spray over it. I don't know. That's okay, I guess. As long as it doesn't create a safety issue, I guess that's okay. But if it were me, I'd fix up the car, put the money into it, even though it's a depreciating asset, because you'll have a nicer car to drive around for, you know, for some period of time. And, um, Uh, I I don't know. That's what I would do. But remember, I'm from California. I'm from Los Angeles. So that does uh, skew my perception or my advice a little bit. I don't know. That's what I would do. Um, Thanks for asking me that question, this friend of mine. And uh, hopefully you're listening to the podcast and uh, you'll hear my answer. Hey, that's all the time we have. Brian, thanks for coming in. Everybody tune in next week. We're going to try and answer the question, are you busy? This is Dave Hagan, and you're listening to the Financial Wellness Podcast. You've been listening to the Financial Wellness Podcast, Dave's weekly message to keep you on your path to financial success. If you have a question that you would like Dave to answer on the podcast, go to thefinancialwellnesspodcast.com. You can leave an audio message with one click of a button or type your message into the question box. Either way, it's sent right to Dave's phone. Remember, Dave will randomly draw from the submitted questions and pick the winner of a free one-hour personal conversation with Dave 
to help you achieve your financial goals. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you receive the new episode notifications or share the podcast via the app with your family and friends. This is your announcer, Nick Appel, wishing you every financial success.